And hello everybody, I am Mike the Zorch, and I have been gone for a while. I haven't been live streaming, I haven't been making any videos lately. And I've been to dark places again. Not as dark as in the past, but it's, it's something that happens to people who have depression. You will have periods where you'll have lows and you'll have highs and sometimes you'll have really deep lows and here recently I've been in a deep low not as deep as I've been before I've been in much much darker places in the past and you now and you can never get rid of depression that's the one thing you have to learn about depression is you can never get rid of it. You can never, never get rid of it. You don't outgrow it. You know, if you're a parent and you have a kid that has depression, forget about them thinking about that they're going to outgrow whatever's going on. It's not a phase. They'll never outgrow it. And the worst thing you could possibly do for them is to put them on the drugs because the drug is worse. I mean, if you look at the side effects for that stuff, it's like, it, it, it's thoughts of suicide. One of the, one of the main side effects for, mo for most, if not all, of the current subscription drugs for depression. You know, and I, I don't need a pill to make me have thoughts of suicide, thank you very much. I do that completely on my own, just fine. So, you know, I, I don't need that crap. And you know, I, I, I haven't had those thoughts recently, but I have had them. I have had them, and I, I, I had them pretty bad. Now, because of this depression, because of what it going on with me, I wasn't there for my kid. Even when I was still living with my ex and, and the kids. I really wasn't there. I was there physically, but I was, really wasn't there mentally and emotionally. You know, we, we didn't get along, me and their mother. At, at first it was fine. When we started dating and everything, that was, that was great. But then over time, I think that's when the depression started and it didn't get really bad until I went to that damn place in Arkansas that was probably one of the worst decisions I ever made to go out there to Lions World now I I, I have to say I met Tiger there, and that was probably one of the best things that happened to me out there. But all the rest, you now the entire staff wasn't the problem. It was the people in the specific area of Lions World I was in. I'm not going to go into gory detail of everything. It's just, and, and Tiger went through the same thing. They delighted in psychologically torturing you it's the things that they did they were just assholes that that's basically what they were these people in this in this specific department we were in training and computer we were training in computers there it lions world was a place for the visually impaired and the blind and this was a special program we were in where you would train in computers and you would get a job with the irs they would directly hire you for the Internal Revenue Service. Now, Tiger went on to work for the IRS and he worked for them for like 20 something years. And I didn't make it through the program because of the stress that those assholes, the people that ran the thing, put me through. And, you know, some other people went through it and some other people didn't. I didn't handle it very well. And I think that's where things really started going bad. 
for me. I, I was already starting to get depression, and that just made it worse. The, the, the emotional torture that those people put you through when you were in there. And I just made it worse. And, and then in the 2000s, my depression hit rock bottom. And I was there with the kids, there with for their mom, physically, but emotionally, mentally, I wasn't. Now, and, and then eventually, um, things happened and, you know, we didn't have a place. We were staying with someone who was a friend of my ex's from church was a, a longtime family friend of hers and we were she they they the apartment place where she was staying made her you know made her uh, have to make us leave I think I, I I can't really remember well that past those times I don't have very many many memories of those times maybe a few happy Few, the, the few happy times I actually had with the kids. Playing with them, playing with my daughter, playing with my two sons. You know, a, a few happy times. But other than that, I, I completely blacked out most of that time. You know, being there with them. Because a lot of it was, you know, I was in... I wasn't really there. Physically I was there, but mentally I wasn't. And... You know... Uh, Tigra has the same thing. He went through uh, different issues, and I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna go into detail on those, because those are... That's a tale for him to tell. Uh, he's had issues too. He has a bit of depression like... Like I do. He's gone through dark, he's had, he's gone through dark places like me. And, you know, he, he, he knew something was wrong, but he didn't know that that was specifically what was wrong with me. And I think my ex knew was something was wrong, but she, she responded to me with anger. And I think maybe if she had maybe forced me to get the help I needed, things might have been different. The tiger said something to me. He said that maybe me not being, you know, me leaving and going and moving in with him in DC, because I, I left, left from there and moved in with him from DC, and the original intention of me moving there was to find work find a place for, you know, the kids and their mom to live out there to get them out of, to get them out of Michigan, and, but mentally, emotionally, where I was, I went out there and I just, I just turtled emotionally. There was a time, there was a time when I remember, you know, they were living in a hotel, they didn't have a place to live, and he was on the phone, arranging to send money to them to help him, and I just sat there and did nothing, and I felt nothing. That, that period was some of the darkest times for me. And, but over time, you know, he, I think he realized something was wrong and he changed a lot too. Um, he had a very strong religious mindset, but then he, he began to discover spirituality. He began to discover, you know, things on his own. And he started helping me. Even though he didn't really know what was wrong with me, and he even had his own laundry list of issues. 
and then there was Dave, and Dave has his own whole textbooks full of issues. He helped me, you know, and it was rough. I have to say one thing, he's an expert at tough love, <laughs> basically. You know, he wasn't, he, 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 he wasn't gentle a lot of times, but he helped me through a lot. But I wasn't there for them, for the kids, for, for my ex. You know, I, I wasn't there mentally, emotionally. And I know I have to live with that. Just be, me being me having depression, you know, that's not you know that's not an excuse to get me out of what I did. It's not. It isn't an excuse. But I I also can't change what happened. I can't change you know, what I went through and what I put them through because of what they went through because of what was happening to me. Now, Tigra had said something, I'm um, getting back to that. Tigra had said something, he said, what if I had stayed there, you know, because me and her weren't getting along, me and, me and my ex weren't getting along, and the resentment, her resentment was building and building over time, and we would have arguments, she would get mad at me, and, you know, if we, basically, what if we stayed together and our not getting along began to negatively affect them? Despite the fact that I wasn't there in their life, they actually turned out very well. No. My oldest son, he he's he's had developmental issues. He's had some issues since birth. So some of that is my fault of how he can't how he turned out most likely and the rest of it is congenital and then you know my younger son he he's doing fairly well he's got a job you know he's doing fairly well he he was living with a girlfriend for a while and then he moved back home i don't know what's going on with his situation now and then, and then there's my daughter and she holds she doesn't hate me i just found that out recently because i talked to her in text messages on the phone she let me know that my aunt had recently passed away and no one told me no one from the family called me to tell me anything. At least that I am aware of. I don't see any calls from any numbers that I that I know that come from my family. And she let me know that my aunt had passed away and I had heard about it and we talked a bit. She doesn't hate me. She's angry and hurt. Because I, I really wasn't there. I wasn't there for her graduation or her wedding she was married she got married after after she got out of high school she married the guy she met at bible camp with the church that she and her she and her brothers and her mom go to and part of the reason why i didn't go was one i didn't know the, the wedding was taking place I didn't know when it was going to take place, and and second, we really don't have the money, even if I wanted to go, and I, I would have gone, even if, you know, I was invited to go, you know, I didn't have the cash, we all don't have the money, that's still no excuse, but that's one of the factors why I wasn't there for those things. And... <sighs> Point is... If I had been there... 
and things didn't change and I didn't get to help, how would they have turned out? Would they have been worse off because I was there in my condition? You know, would they have gotten into things like drugs or whatever? They, they haven't in my absence. But, but would, it, would things have gone differently? You know, I, I can't sit here and just tear myself up over thinking about you know, what would have or could have happened. I, I really can't. And I can't change the past. I can't go back, you know, and, and, and undo the things that I did because of what I'm going through. All I can do is go forward and, you know, at, at least... At least she understands what I'm going through because she, she has some issues of her own, similar to mine, because of circumstances that happened with her, partially because I wasn't there, and she, she, above all the kids, except for my oldest son, she was the closest to me, and... You know, there are things that happened to her, her, her being able to do her favorite thing in the whole world. And she had to stop doing it because of a physical injury. And that really affected her. And I was not there. I wasn't there. I don't know if I, if I was even there physically, I don't know if I would have been able to be there mentally and, or... can't um you know I, I I can't keep beating myself over the head over the things that I can't change what I can do is try to move on and you know I, I've been I've been trying to do things to improve I was doing the bike with Mike stuff in the morning you now and I stopped doing that I was doing some live streaming and I even stopped doing that I mean here recently I was in a pit I wanted to do a whole bunch of work for the channel and in, in gamers Bay and all I did was just sit here I had no motivation to do anything just sit here and vegetate on YouTube. And then, then I started feeling sick. I started feeling chill. You know, you know, you know that feeling you get when you start getting a cold, a really bad cold, and you feel you feel those weak shake. You feel weak and shaky, and you get those chills. Like it's not cold, but you can't stay warm. I started getting that and that was the day that I talked to her and then after that I talked to Tigra and Dave and it was mostly just Dave just sitting there listening I think he I think maybe he fell asleep in his weekly recliner but it was Tigra listening and Tigra talked about his issues too and I started feeling better after that getting it off my shoulders just talking about it and he got some stuff off of his shoulders and you know and it's tough it's tough living with this it takes it takes a lot you can never outgrow it. You can never get rid of it. You know, I mean, if you want, you can take the medicine for it. I really don't recommend it. Don't take the drugs for this. It's worse. The best thing you can do is try and surround yourself with positive friends like I have done. That's helped me a lot. 
change your situations if you if you're in an environment that's that is you know stressful or is not giving you the emotional and moral support that you need get out of it get out of it you know, I as I said I've been to very dark places and I have thought about suicide many times I thought about it I thought about it really hard so I'm you know uh, I, I, I'm still here obviously you know uh, if I've come this far I mean, think think about it think think about this Robin Williams had depression and he killed himself the one man in the world that no one would expect you know, probably one of the hap one of the seemingly happiest and greatest and most wonderful human beings in the world. Robin Williams killed himself because of depression. You wouldn't imagine that someone like him would go be going through that, and he was. So that gives you an idea just how serious this is. That someone like Robin Williams, one of the greatest com one of the greatest comedians, of the of the uh, of of all time, had depression and died from it, D committed suicide from it. Gives you some idea of exactly how serious this is. This is not something. This is not a phase. This is not something you grow out of. You'll live with this the rest of your life when you have it. You can learn to cope with it to some extent. Like, it has come back on me a few times. It came back on me really bad in, the, in 2008. I mean, actually, actually 2018, last year. And just this week it came back pretty bad but nowhere to the extent it was before so you can you can get somewhat of a handle on it by changing your environment and having more positive people around you having more positive situations around you but you can never be free of You can do things like exercise, which is good for it. And I, I need to get back on that. I'm a fluffy boy. I got me some, I got me some big man boobs here. And, you know, I've been, I, I've been doing bike with Mike with my exercise bike over here. I need to get back on that. Um, not this week probably I'll be starting that back up at some point but you can do things to change you know your your situation you can learn how to sort of rein it in a little but you can never get rid of it you can never fully control it This, this thing, this shadow that's been over me for years ruined my life, ruined my marriage with my wife, ruined my relationship with my kids. It wrecked my life. And it's done this to a lot of people. It's led a lot of people to self-destruction. You know, it's led a lot of people to to just basically end it all. So this is this is not something. This is not a joke. Not a phase. You know, it's not just oh, just you're just being angsty, like an angsty teen. No. No. Oh, oh, this is this is something that needs to be taken seriously. And 
you're going to see people who have this go through periods of highs and lows. Like when I was streaming and doing Bike with Mike, that was one of my highs. And then when I stopped, that was one of my lows. I I'm coming off of one of those lows now after me not doing any kind of streaming or, or doing Bike with Mike for a long time, I'm, I'm coming off of one of those lows. And it's just something that I just have to live with. Try to manage. And when you're around people who have this, you, you, you need to be there for them. You need to help them. Not be a problem for them need to be encouraging, you need to be, you know, the emotional shoulder for them to cry on. Because anger, ridicule, that's not going to help them. Being hard on them, emotionally, if you're a parent and your, your kid's going through this, being, being hard on them know thinking oh they just need more discipline no no you're wrong they need more love they don't need discipline they need love they need your support they need to know that you're there to support them it's not a behavioral problem it's not just them being uh, acting up this is a condition. This is, an, this is a, a chemical imbalance. This is a thing in the brain. It's not even, it's not even a mental disorder. It's a, it's a chemical imbalance. And it's one that is difficult to treat because, as I said, the drugs are, the drug side effects for treating this are pretty bad. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I am spinning my wheels here I am going over the same crap again and again and again rambling on I tend to do that anyway I'm sort of back I'm sort of coming back from my low um got some stuff to take care of today so if I won't be streaming maybe maybe later um, I had been playing the game I had been playing Final Fantasy 14 and I did I did finally get that car uh, some other stuff is going on I, I'll I'll highlight that in the next um, stream I'll do for the game I'll highlight all that um, I've got some plans for stuff for gamers Bay I'm going to be doing a comparison of Steam, Origin, um, Epic Game Store, good old games for Gamers Bay, in a video for Gamers Bay, a PC game store showdown for Gamers Bay. And, you know, I'll be doing more stuff for this channel. That is until I hit my next. That is until I hit my next pit. And hopefully that will not come for a long time. As I said, when you're dealing with people who have depression, they will have their highs, they'll have their lows, and some of their lows can be pretty deep. I'm Mike DeZorch. I'm back from the darkness. See how long this one lasts. Thanks for watching.